Hey there, today we're talking the FS5 Mark II. So I'm filming this before NAB. Um, I'm hoping that all my predictions are going to be right. I'm expecting that not all of them will be. But I will make a video as soon as I possibly can once we know more about what the FS5 Mark II actually looks like. It seems to me that not much changed between the FS7 Marks I and Mark II. So Mark I and Mark II, not Marks. Not much of the functionality, not much of the internal bit seemed to have changed much. The sensor didn't seem to improve too much. Um, not, there wasn't really that big of a change. That being said, in my opinion, I really believe that the FS5 Mark II is going to be a big change from that type of product strategy because Sony has changed their product strategy. It feels to me that the biggest limitation of the FS5 Mark I at this point is the, is the bit rates, the way it records. Um, the FS7 could do up to 600 megabits per second in 4K 12-bit RAW, I believe, whereas the FS5 can only do up to 100 megabits per second at UHD 4K. So that's DCI 4K for the FS7 Mark 1 and 2, and UHD 4K for the FS5. Another limitation is the sensor. It's old. It's quite old. Another limitation is high frame rate recording. It's very limited. Perhaps for the price and the value offering, we could argue that the FS5 still makes sense on paper, or at least it did when it came out. However, with products like the GH5 and the GH5S on the market, I don't think that we can reasonably assume that a product with the FS5's value offering can really fetch the price that they're still asking for it. I don't think that we can reasonably expect a video-centric camera with good bit rates and great color depth to cost $5,000. I think we'll see a new sensor for the FS5 Mark II. I think we're going to see a sensor that can record up to a 6K resolution. I think we're going to see a 24 megapixel sensor, hopefully one that we'll down the line see on upcoming Sony APS-C model. It'll be dual gain architecture. It'll have a back, it'll be a backside eliminated sensor, BSI. It'll probably have state of the art on sensor phase detect autofocus, face detect, IAF. This will be another AF system in line with the way that Sony's treating AF since the A9. It'll have autofocus on par with an A9, a C200, an Alpha 6500. I'm sure the FS5 Mark II will keep the wonderful variable ND filters, but I'm sure too that we'll, kind of diving back into the nitty gritty, we'll see some big improvements in bit rates and color depth. So I'm expecting wholeheartedly to see 300 plus megabits per second in 4K. I'm expecting to see 10 bit 422 pretty much across the board, hoping for some raw, perhaps we won't actually get it, but we'll see. I think we've got to see much longer record times at something like 480 frames per second. I think we should expect to see 4K 60, if not perhaps a little bit more. I think we should expect to see a 6K potential in there. Sony could really knock the ball out of the park against the C200 and the EVA1 by providing a sensor with autofocus and 6K resolution for less than $7,500. I think we need to reasonably expect much better low light performance. We saw pretty good low light performance out of the FS5, but with a backside illuminated sensor, we're obviously going to see better. And with a more modern sensor architecture, we should also reasonably expect to see better. So we've covered the sensor, autofocus, bit rates, frame rates, resolution, and that's a pretty good start. Perhaps middle too. The way that I want to end it though, is talking about Sony and their product strategy. I really think that Sony has changed gears in terms of product strategy. They are really trying to pack as much power and value into every single camera model. They're gonna be trying to compete this FS5 with C200, EVA1, the GH5, Ursa, whomever, whatever else is in that space that's around that same price point. They're also gonna be trying to compete with things like the red scarlet kit that you can get from Apple. Now as well, at three times the cost, it's arguable that the value offering is greater than three times. And so I think that they're gonna have to pull users back from an entry level red option with a very high value proposition in their FS5 Mark II. I really think that Sony's gonna bring something compelling to the table. We've seen Sony kind of 
change gears a little bit with, and I've said that a couple times now, I'm sorry for that same verbiage, but we've seen it with the A7 III, carrying over the body design and all those excellent features from the A7 III and the A7 R III and the A9. We've seen the AF module from the A9 in the A7 III. We've seen the same processor, the same, a lot of internal hardware in the RX uh, 100, the latest RX 100, the latest RX 10 in, well, yeah. And then you got the stacked CMOS sensor in those one inch types uh, cameras as well that we're also seeing in the A9. The way that Sony's building their cameras is pushing as much into them as possible because we're kind of at a stage where Sony can really capture a lot of market. They have the lenses, they have a good enough market share already that if they power through and really work hard against Canon and Nikon's product strategies by offering more value, discerning users who aren't as loyal to an individual brand like there are more of nowadays will really kind of go that direction. I've referenced a lot of stills cameras throughout the video and I want to iterate that I do know that the FS5 is a cinema camera, is, is a broadcast device. I think that a lot of those a lot of those bits of the puzzle kind of carry through, right? Because cinematographers are just as interested in the quality of the product they're outputting in things like bit rates versus FPS in terms of a still camera, stuff like that. <clears throat> they're equally as impressed with good color depth, just like everybody wants more bits for their raw files in stills. So I think a lot of the tenants kind of hold true throughout there. Anyway, that's all I have to say on the subject. Thank you very much for your time and for your attention. Again, if you've made it this far, I will try to uh, dive into the FS5 Mark II once, once we know more. Uh, please don't hesitate to check out the like button. No, the Amazon affiliate links in the description. I lost myself there. And also smash the like button. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one.